Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Lucian from Georgia Tech. This work is a joint work with Professor Chairman Chow at the Chinese University of Hong Kong. Uh, this SOK is about cryptographic computation over privacy preserving neural network, or PPNN for short. PPNN provides various uh, privacy services. We will highlight three major kind of frameworks and followed by some evaluation results. The most basic surface is oblivious inference, uh, meaning that there's a client he will send, um, uh, he or she will send a, a private sensitive query to a private neural network model and then get back the result. The server will be oblivious to the query and the result, and the client um, will not learn the model. There's an uh, also stud inference is an upgrade. Uh, the model owner need not to maintain a server. The server not only process the in encrypted queries, but also uh, the encrypted model. A data owner can also outsource his training data to an untrusted server to perform outsourced training, which produces an encrypted neural network. Private training is an upgrade. It further allows a multiple data owner to jointly train a model without revealing that data to any other party. And also, the chaining actually support inference because inference is just a subroutine of chaining. The goal of this SOK is to dissect the rapid development of uh, PPNN and help newcomers to quickly dive right into solving the open problems. Um, and we also want to help them to avoid reinventing the wheel and this is important to limit the scope of an SOK. Um, we will exclude the framework that use trusted hardware. That's why we have the word cryptographic in our paper title. We also exclude membership influence and model reinversion attack because the defense are of independent interest. We also exclude defense of privacy because they have different privacy guarantee and we please distinguish uh, PPNN with federated learning because they generally do not hide the model. Okay, you may ask, is this the right time to have an SOK? Here's a simple timeline. Uh, the first uh, modern PPNN framework, uh, Crypto NAS, born in 2016, it takes five minutes to recognize a Harriton digit. Two years later, Gazelle take uh, around three seconds to do an image classification on CIFAR 10. Three years later, uh, GeForce take only 0 0.3 seconds to um, handle it with a uh, neural network architecture, VGG16, which is a quite popular one. And similar rapid developments also happen for chaining. Um, in the past six years, there are more than 50 papers that uh, appear across different communities. Uh, we made a genealogy that tried to highlight the contributions of each work. We also want to help make easier and fair comparison between the frameworks. For example, uh, non -cruding, using non coding assumptions can help in better performance, but it is not fair to compare those without using uh, non coding assumption. And many frameworks, they are running in non local area network, so we, we evaluate them in the wide area network setting. In this talk, we will make, uh, focus on three major kinds of frameworks. They are purely using LXG, which is um, linear homomorphic encryption, mixed, mixed framework that will use other crypto techniques like uh, couple circuit and the frameworks that use non coding servers, which we call uh, MPC framework. All these frameworks, all these type of frameworks support obvious influence. Some pure LXG and all MPC framework support uh, outsourced inference. And some MPC framework further support private chaining, which is the most challenging privacy service. Now, uh, we dive into the technical part in this paper. Uh, in a neural network computation, we, we can consider a neural network as a sequence of linear and nonlinear layers. Linear layers include uh, convolution and matrix multiplication. They are usually handled differently from the nonlinear ones. 
in a pure LXG framework, this client and server, the client holds a secret key of the LXG and the server holds the public key. And the server also has the subtext for the input queries, we call it bracket X. The server will multiply the ciphertext with the weights and then sum them up to produce the output ciphertext. Machine learning techniques can help. For example, pruning can set some small mod, uh, mod parameters to zero so that the server can skip some computation. It is more challenging to handle nonlinear layers in pure XG framework. For activation layers that uh, apply an activation function on each individual input entry, the server will, uh, or the framework will use polynomial approximation to approximate the function, which degrades accuracy. For pooling layer that aggregates results from several input entries, uh, it can only handle average pooling. The max pooling, which usually gives high accuracy, is not supported. Another issue is a uh, belief is uh, the data type. In pink test neural network, um, the, the, the neural networks are op operate over 14 points. But in LHG, they can only support fixed point arithmetic meaning that we need a high bit rate to emulate the floating points. Such a high bit rate will lead to large XG parameters, resulting in worse performance uh, of LHG. And sorry, uh, this issue is not unique to um, LHG framework, but also all the other kind of uh, frameworks. So we ask the questions, uh, can we, uh, how, how to uh, properly, efficiently, and accurately evaluate layers in no bit rate and this issue, uh, it's not hard to see that this issue also happened for Chainlink. Um, and even worse, in Chainlink, the model parameters are dynamic, meaning that the, the, the weights will fluctuate a lot. And back to LHG, um, it is not easy for ones who without cryptographic knowledge to know how to select the right par HG parameters to balance the accuracy and efficiency. And that's why we ask how to guide non cryptographer to select the tight HG parameters um, for, for the neural network. And this leads to a whole subsection in our SOK about HG compilers. OK, uh, there are some issues in LHG, and fixed the frameworks, uh, mixed the frameworks are proposed to solve some issue in, in these SO, SOK frameworks. Um, for the first issue that LHG computation is slow, Mixed frameworks use active sharing. Active, the operations over active sharing is just causing a few CPU instruction, so it is order of magnitude faster than LXG. However, uh, this when we do multiplication over active sharing, it still requires some online interaction, and it requires some on, uh, offline preprocessing in of an online stage to like uh, generate some multiplication chiplets. Um, and other issue of LHG frameworks is, is approximation and results in low accuracy. Makes the framework, the, the key insight in makes the framework to solve this issue is that they, they found that comparison is a fundamental operation for some nonlinear layers like Relu and max pool. Uh, you may know that like couple circuits can handle comparison, but they are not quite that efficient. So, uh, Delphi, they use machine learning technique to search for the uh, best, uh, kind of best neural network architecture for uh, reducing the use of couple circuits while maintaining decent performance, uh, decent accuracy. At GeForce, they propose a secure comparison protocol that can be linearized. It. And that means that we can use GPU to optimize the performance. Um, and compared to GC, the performance uh, is uh, out of magnitude faster, uh, better. But we still want to know, can we further push the boundary? Like, can we implement an uh, even more efficient comparison protocol? Can we make other crypto pr primitive GPU or TPU friendly? And the third kind of uh, server uh, frameworks, they use non-coding assumptions. Uh, in a free PC frameworks, they are making a strong assumption than two PC framework because uh, in 2PC, the attacker can uh, only have one additional server to compromise, but in 3PC, there are two more servers uh, for the attacker to aim for. 
But the upside is using long, uh, three PC, uh, more, more, more long-quoting surface, so they give better performance and higher throughput because the third server can help generate the multiplication chiplet. And this is quite essential for chaining because it is uh, performance hungry. And other uh, challenge in chaining is that uh, it uses some complex nonlinear function. For example, batch norm and softmax. Some works reduce them into evaluate a inverse square root uh, division and exponential function. Um, so we ask a similar questions about how to efficiently and accurately approximate them. But here, the approximation is not limited to using polynomials. And because the known approach are often are quite perf uh, have a, a lot of performance overhead, so they usually use non coding assumptions to compensate for the performance. So we just ask, can we realize high throughput and accurate perfect chaining without the non coding assumption? Uh, here is a truncated table in our SOK. Uh, this is a giant table. And one can quickly identify the framework of their own interest across different uh, dimensions. For, uh, the final part of this SOK has a performance evaluation. Um, in the experiment, uh, there are many variables. And the uh, frameworks are usually only optimized for the setting they're aiming for. So, um, for example, in mixed up frameworks, they minimize the online latency on ideal network setting. So we wonder like, how they perform in a less ideal setting like a wide area network. Um, our evaluation confirmed that the mixed up frameworks still, still perform the best in wide area network. Um, and they require at least 100 megabytes per second to attain I think their best performance. Um, during the work, we find that this quite, require a lot of extensive, a lot of effort to implement and do some uh, revaluation. So we wonder, can we build a universal compiler that enables rapid prototyping and allows uniform experiments comparison? Um, finally, uh, the full version of this work will be available as a website with interactive charts and genealogy. Uh, if you feel we have missed your work, please feel free to contact us. Thank you. Thank you very much for this uh, nice talk. So I was wondering um, why, why do some of these works only focus on inference and not training? What, what, what's your uh, your thoughts there? Yeah, th thanks for your questions. Uh, this is a great one. Um, because for chain link, it is like uh, require a lot of inference to do the chain link. Because as I mentioned, like uh, in chain link, we require like billion of iterations for inference. So it's very performance hungry. And like if some framework they support inference, they may rely on some like offline uh, preprocessing. It takes a lot of time. So it is not scalable for chain link that require millions of iteration. Thank you. I had a quick question. I guess like as we have seen, there are multiple um, degrees of freedom, like multiple configurations for this uh, neural network, cryptographic neural network, like number of servers, whether you give fairness guarantees or not. So given uh, this work, what specifications of these configuration would you say needs immediate attention, like the pressing uh, problems for the cryptography community to look into? Um, I think there are a lot of opportunities for the crypto communities. Um, for example, how to further improve the performance, how to make the accuracy better, but particular, like you said, I mean, you may be concerned about how to improve the security requirements, right? like uh, malicious security. Um, I, I, I would say it is, uh, let me go back to the slide. Yeah, quickly to the slide. I think I would say there's a lot of space for them to explore, and I cannot like give how to. There's no uh, definitive answer for that. Like you can look for the like what kind of security guarantee you want to provide, and look up their work and see how to improve upon them. I would say 
that may be the thing that researchers can do. Thank you. Let's thank the speaker once again.